This will be just a short walk around to the Larson Cable Trailer. Just point out some of the things that we we paid attention to when we built the trailer. One, we have the pinnel hitch up here rather than a ball hitch. When we're loading and lifting with the trailer like we are, a ball hitch don't have the security that a lock pinnel hitch does when it's fastened to a truck or a pickup. That's why we choose the pinnel. We've had a lot of people question about the balls. The wiring that we have in this trailer, we've got set up in this protected coated wire. It go, it's got the seven plug that's in most of the vehicles out there today. It goes inside of the frame. All of our wiring for our trailer, our lights, our brakes, everything is inside the tubular frame. All of the connections that we put in there are the grease-filled scotch lock connectors. They've been very, very reliable. We use a 7,000 pound jack up front here for the front of this. Here you'll see one of the accessories that we use here. This is a side roller accessory. Uh, it allows us to pull the cable off of the reel that we have loaded on the trailer and pull it off at a 90 degree angle to the side. This here is the gas tank here for the engine that powers the hydraulic system. This being the oil reservoir that supplies the hydraulic system with oil. The reason we use the larger capacity, oil capacity there, is so that we can keep the oil cool so we don't end up overheating the oil on a hot day or in hot conditions. Under this hood, we have the uh, engine that we use to power the hydraulic system. This is a Vanguard 23 horse. We use Hondas also. Um, we're getting whatever engine we can at this point to power the system. Okay, this unit here has one of our cold start kits on it. What we do here, we've got a hydra hydraulic valve here where we can open this valve in cold weather. And when we're starting the gas engine, we circulate the oil right through this small area rather than push the oil through the entire system. Once we get the engine started and warmed up in cold conditions, we reach over and close this valve, which then forces the oil through the hydraulic system. This is a two-speed hydraulic motor. This is what we use to power the tires. We also use this in the back and some other accessories that we use. That's why we have a quick attach on this motor where we can pull this out and we can disconnect the motor by rotating it and pulling it out of there on a spline coupling. This, uh, when we don't have the hydraulic motor up here, we've got this tension brake that we can actually put on here and then we can rest these tires down against the edge of the reels and put a little drag on there. That comes in handy when we're laying cable out on the ground or if we got a situation where they're doing a maintenance work and they wanna have a little tension on the reel as they're pulling cable off of it. These two tubes here on the reel turner rack are arbor storage tubes. If we're hauling something on here where the arbors aren't in place, we obviously have place for two arbors on here where we can carry multiple reels. If we're not using them back here, we need to store them, we put them in these tubes here so that they don't get misplaced or put in another vehicle. This is our swing out valve control panel. We got this so that we can swing it to the rear of the trailer so that uh, we unlock these here. We can swing this to the rear of the trailer so that we can be back here behind the trailer where the, uh, we got all the controls back here where we can see what's going on and what we got to do. This valve here is a flow control compensating valve for our hydraulic motor. This here, we will be able to use that and get, we pick our speeds, we can let go and it stays at whatever speed we left it at. We don't have to hold the handle all day while we're rolling or unrolling wire. These two jaws we have here are for the second arbor so we can carry multiple reels on the trailer. The power industry, a lot of times we use smaller reels. We can put two reels on each arbor, extend these arms out and we can put two reels on the top arbor, two reels on the bottom arbor, or one medium sized reel on top and a medium on the bottom. These arms will also extend out to accommodate up to a 12 foot diameter interduct reel. The width in between the arms will accommodate up to a 54 inch cable reel. This is our receiver hitch back here. We've got several accessories that we put on here. 
in several states. We can also put another receiver hitch back here and put another trailer behind this one. We also have another place here where if you do use the secondary trailer back here, the trailer is wired so you can plug your second trailer in up here so all of your lights and brakes work on both trailers. This is where we store the level winding device for the cable trailer. You'll notice in our fenders, we have a place here where we can put the chalks that we often carry to put in between the tires. This is just a toolbox for some of the things we carry on the trailer. This is where we store the figure eighting device when it's not being used. Underneath of this real turner rack, you'll see a tray down here for some of the longer tools and accessories that we keep in there. That way they cannot fall off the trailer. This is the container where we store the paperwork for the trailer. The owner's manual and a lot of the warranty information and stuff is in this sealed container here on the real turner rack. That pretty much wraps up the walk around. This is the model 7500 trailer. They're basically the same, couple of different options. Thanks for watching.